Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm going to be showing you a game from the league that I'm playing in. And the way it works is there are a certain number of people who are participating. I think in my case, in my particular section of the league, I think there may be 12 people, 11 or 12, and we play round robin with each other over the course of the entire year of 2021. So. You play once as free and once as shadow against each person in the league, and then at the end, a certain number of people may make the playoffs, and I think there are different tiers in the league, but it's just a slightly more organized way of playing um, competitively and for people who want to play a little more seriously than just a pickup game, but still, it's pretty chill and relaxed. Um, so this is actually my first game that I'm playing in the league, and we're using these um, action tokens. And if you're familiar with the game Hunt for the Ring, which I actually have never played, um, they have a couple of extra tokens that they include, which helps you balance the game. So the base game tends to favor shadow a little bit, and we're trying as a way of balancing it out to give the free people player these two action tokens. This one is for, lets you draw a card once, and this other one uh, sorry, this one uh, lets you draw a card, and this one lets you advance a nation one towards war. So it's basically like an action die, but kind of a relatively weak action that you get out of it. And um, the significant thing about it, I mean, it's good to get an extra action, and they're used once, and then, and then they're gone. Um, the significant thing is that they don't count against your number of dice when deciding whether or not you can pass. And so what that means is for the free people player, if you, let's say, have two dice left and Shadow has two dice left, and then you use one of these tokens, then Shadow has to go and you're going to get to take the last action of the round. So so that's pretty, that's pretty powerful in terms of, you know, getting Saruman or stalling Gandalf or things like Cruel Weather. Um, it's a pretty powerful effect just the the tempo aspect of it so we were trying it out neither of us had ever used it my opponent is backdrifts and i'm playing free people and he's playing uh sorry they're playing shadow and you can see on round one backdrifts uh, allocated zero eyes and rolled zero eyes i um did not roll four wheels of the west i rolled three characters so this is a pretty solid start for me. I'm very happy to get three movements for free. Um, you know, Bactrif does have these two musters, so that's a good start to get Saruman, get their armies moving. All right, so this is going to be a pretty straightforward turn, I think. Um, I move, they muster, get Saruman, move some armies down here in Gondor, play the ring is mine you know i think that's fine um maybe it's worth considering drawing a card because you have plenty of time to play that and if you draw cards early it'll just give you more options but i think it also makes sense to play it it's, it's a you know always good to get a red tile in i use my card drawing ability now because i see that i have this palantir here and i want to see you know Squire's okay, but you know I'm not really ready to separate Strider yet. Um, so I think it makes sense to try and draw here. I did want to save that for tempo purposes later, but getting to draw a productive card and therefore draw an extra one with this Palantir while Gandalf is still the guide is great. I moved once right off the bat at the very beginning of the turn, just in case he was gonna play. They were gonna play Lidless Eye. I'm not sure if that really makes sense it seems very unlikely but i would have felt pretty dumb to not get a free movement when i had the chance to get a free movement because i'm certainly moving at least once so um that's what happened i happened to draw a great card faramir's rangers especially if they're coming into gondor which it looks like there may be a attack in the gondor area so you know i think it makes sense to get these armies moving up to Old Forest Road. This is a relatively small army, but against Woodland Realm, you know, reasonable enough. So 
but they don't have a muster for Sauron, so Sauron is not at war yet. So it's, you know, I'm I'm thinking maybe the elves are going to be the one that they put to war. Maybe the North is going to be the one they put to war. We'll we'll see what gets to war first. So I go ahead and I'm happy with my movement. They get these armies ready, and because. I used a token, I'm actually taking the last action of the round, and with their last action, they move this army out to to South Athelion, which I'm very happy to see, so Faramir gets his shot at this army. It, you know, it's not a big difference, it's just, you know, on average one hit, but it's pleasant. And, of course, I play Faramir, perfect timing, does get one hit, and I get my reinforcements in Osgiliath. And, you know, Gondor is looking pretty relatively buff at this point. I'm not sure what is this army exactly doing? Where is it going? Um, I don't know that it's taking Minas Tirith by itself. And why isn't this army also coming around to Minas Tirith? I'm not sure, you know, we did, you know, three movements with these armies in, in Gondor. If I'm going to bother to do that, I want to have something. I want to get something out of it. I redraw through a day and a night. It's fine. I wouldn't mind seeing more reinforcement cards at this point in the game. The Fellowship's making great progress. I get Dead Men. And now I'm thinking, okay, if I get one Palantir, I can use Gwahir to move seven with Strider. One to Trollshaws, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can get all the way to Helm's Deep. Or... So I can get to Helm's Deep... And then I can play Dead Men to Pilar Gear, and then I can crown Aragorn. So I could possibly get a turn to Aragorn, which I'm feeling pretty safe about because I have this army in Asgiliath, and we're pretty far away from. He doesn't. Uh, they don't have these armies toward Pilar Gear yet. So this is this is a great start for me. I think it's a decent start for them. All right, one eye, and then rolls one more but did not get a lot of army movement. I think it's probably fine to see these musters. So I didn't I didn't get a lot of movement here. Maybe I should be playing a card right away at this point. I don't know. Guards of the Citadel is okay. I'm thinking if they come in and attack us, Gilead, depending on how many hits I get, he uh, they get against me, maybe I'll retreat into Minas Tirith and then save Guards of the Citadel. Maybe I just retreat to Pilar gear. Um, I, I hadn't really quite decided if I was retreating to Pilar gear or Minas Tirith. I, I wonder, um, should I move and then potentially lose Gandalf or, or what? I think I ended up just moving. It's relatively unlikely that I'm going to lose Gandalf here. So I was going to save this card to potentially play here with Strider, but I wanted to see what happened in case I got revealed here. As it turns out, I got hit and a three. So clearly I'm losing Gandalf. I feel a little sad to not draw a card with this Palantir now that, now that Gandalf is gone, but I'm happy to get past Moria and to not be revealed. This is all good. They muster Sauron to war. That makes sense. And... On on they went, so we're seeing a bunch of good red tiles, and draws a character card there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. But if you're drawing character cards, why didn't you put, why didn't you put more eyes in turn one? I, I I don't know. It just it feels a little tough. Maybe it's too early to give up the, on the fellowship, and you want to draw some character cards. But I might be tempted to give up on the fellowship and draw strategy cards at this point. I don't know. I guess we do have two reds in there, so that's nice. Okay. So, I muster the elves. I think it, you know, it's clear that that this army is coming up to Woodland Realm, and if I use this muster, the the muster, the action token plus this muster, the elves can be at war potentially before he gets there. And if I use this token, then he's not going to be able to muster the Witch King this turn. So these tokens really are helping me with, with this tempo. 
So they move armies. That makes sense. It looks like Woodland Realm is going to be attacked. I don't want to get the elves so close to war that they can attack once and then muster the Witch King this round. So I'm going to play my Palantir now. And I go ahead and play Guahir. I'm hoping that I'm going to roll a Will of the West. Ideally, maybe even two Wills of the West. But I feel like the Fellowship is doing well enough. Um, I now have this play where I can move Strider all the way to Edoras. Which then I'm thinking, okay, I can use through a day and a night to get to Helm's Deep, getting this army in Edoras to Helm's Deep to shore it up. And then I can play Dead Men if I want to, or I could just play Dead Men right away whenever it's convenient and get to get to Pilar Gear. So, you know, I I I'm always reluctant to separate Strider when I don't have a Will of the West to crown him, but I I want to save Guards of the Citadel. I don't I don't really need to play it right now. I kind of want to maybe bait him into attacking Gondor. And the Fellowship's doing okay. So that's why that's why I separated Strider out there. I don't know exactly what other card to play, but Dead Men's gonna be much more useful once I get once I get Strider there. I mean it's just unplayable unless I get Strider. So that's what I'm thinking. I want to beef up Gondor. Alright. So he uh they attack Dale. And I'm not exactly sure why. I guess the plan is to put the North to war to be able to get the Witch King. But why not Why not leave Dale alone and attack Woodland Realm? Because if you see me sitting here with these two musters, I, I can get the elves to war before you're going to have a chance to attack me. So... Yeah, I think I, I don't understand this attack against Dale. I, I don't think there's any rush in doing that. So I would go after Woodland Realm as you planned. The elves are close enough to war that you'll be able to attack it again next round, get the elves to war, and then bring in the Witch King. It'd be okay. All right. But they attack Dale, and then we all miss. And then they decide not to press because they don't want me retreating this army in Dale somewhere else, which makes sense. And then I go ahead and muster the elves twice so that the elves are going to be at war. And because I had the last action, they couldn't get so, uh, the Witch King. So that's the round. And now I'm really hoping to roll some Wills of the West because I'd love to get Gandalf. I'm ready to get Aragorn. There are a lot of, a lot of good possibilities here. I'm not sure why this token is still here. That should be cleared. Okay, so they allocate two eyes. Now, I realize that I didn't declare out of Mordor. I, I mean, I didn't declare out of Rivendell to get past Moria, but does it really make sense? Do you really need to do two eyes at this point? It is nice to reveal me, but I would, I would not risk this exactly this sort of situation where I roll a whole bunch of eyes and then maybe the fellowship doesn't even move that much, particularly on a turn where we know that free people is going to, if they get a will of the West is going to use it not to move, but to get a companion, possibly even two companions. I, I would be even less likely to allocate two eyes. I would just I would just allocate one. So I end up rolling two wills of the west, which is obviously great for me. Now if I use a ring on this muster, then I can play Dead Men of Dunharrow and then I can crown I can crown Aragorn and I can get Gandalf. So I can go I can get six dice starting on turn four. And at this point, because I have Everybody except Gandalf and Strider in the Fellowship, I'm happy to have those extra dice to just shore up my defenses. It looks like I have a pretty good Gondor thing going, especially with dead men. So I have Challenge of the King. So this is another card that's useful to, to have Strider down in Gondor. So I have a lot of, a lot of fun options here. 
So I, of course, start by mustering in the Woodland Realm. That was my whole play at the end of last round. And then he is certainly forced to attack Woodland Realm. So those two plays are basically guaranteed. And now at this point, um, I go ahead and get Gandalf in Lorien because I'm noticing that Dol Golder is completely empty and I do have through a day and a night. So I don't think this looks too suspicious. I mean, usually you get him in Fangorn, but you know, I, it's still a threat. I can easily get another companion into Fangorn. I can either move Gandalf or possibly Strider's going that way. So I think this is fine. He doesn't really have any big armies here. And this is really one of the risks of sending this, this army straight up to Woodland Realm so fast. Um, it does put the elves to war, though. Actually, sorry, I mustered my, my own elves to war. So these guys are a threat to get into the Dol Guldur. So something to think about as Shadow. If you see these guys and you see me put Gandalf here, it's definitely a possibility. All right, so he gets the Witch King. Obviously, that they get the Witch King. That's obviously a good play. And now at this point, I'm trying to decide... Is it worth it to use a ring and get Aragorn while I can? Or do I want to wait? Because, you know, this Will of the West, I can do anything that I want with it. I can muster in Lorien to prepare for a military attack against Moria to threaten, you know, Dol Guldur. Or I could move. I'm not really that excited to move against Five Eyes, especially when I have plenty of useful other things to do with, the, with this Will of the West. And because... Their military is not going, Shadow's military is not going particularly fast, and I got that really fast first turn. I'm feeling okay with the fellowship. So I debated a bit, and then I decide, yep, yeah, let's use a ring, let's play Dead Men, and let's muster up Gondor at the same time, get Aragorn in the right position. Now, they go ahead and send these armies north, and I think that's fine. It, it makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really know, know what else to do there where we're going to try and take this over. Part of me wonders if we put this, I, I guess, I guess you're thinking now this isn't enough to, you, you don't, you don't have enough firepower to take out Woodland Realm. I mean, I see that we have half orc and goblin men. Maybe the plan is to get these guys close and then use shadow lengthens. I wonder why not just we could play half orc and goblin men, half orcs and goblin men, and then bring the witch king up here. I don't know. It's a little tricky. So then I get Aragorn, of course. All right. So they're up to nine dice. I'm up to six dice. And so this is interesting. You both have interesting discard choices. What do you discard here? I think the size is pretty clear. And then for me, what do we what do we discard here? I mean, at this point, I'm still thinking the fellowship is, you know, pretty viable. Do I need to save Axe and Bow? It's a nice card. I don't know that they just drew Warm of Sorrow and Toil, which will obviously be a great counter to Axe and Bow. I think I decide to get rid of Path of the Woeses, even though Sudden Strike is nice. Uh, Rohan is not at war. I'm focusing on Gondor and the Elves, and maybe trying to help up here. So I go ahead and declare at this point. Now, I, the reason, yeah, the reason why I didn't declare last round was because I anticipated not moving very much, given that I might roll a Will of the West or two Wills of the West, as it turned out, and get Aragorn and Gandalf. So I didn't actually move at all. So they do not, Shadow does not have to place any eyes. And with nine dice... I might be tempted to put zero eyes and instead they're putting two. So I just think we can get the military going. We can probably roll some eyes anyway. I don't know that I allocate any eyes right there. I guess we're worried about the fellowship going too fast. We're trying to slow them down as shadow. We know we have worn with sorrow and toil. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so they roll one extra eye, and I get this nice, nice roll. So 
I'm in pretty good pretty good shape here. It looks like they're not particularly defending against the um, the threat of through a day and a night from Gandalf. So I'm going to muster up a little bit in Lorien uh, and I'm going to maybe get going with these Gondor armies. I mean, there's if this army continues up north, I'm definitely eyeing Morinon, Bardur. So. And I don't know that they've drawn Corsairs of Umbar. And I guess that looks kind of tasty, but it is going to be a little risky with with this giant army here eyeing umbar it's it's a little tricky all right so i go ahead and move make some progress it's always nice to move at least once a turn rolls six and gets an eye to reveal me i take one damage okay that's not unreasonable and then we get worn with star and toil the reason why i didn't lose a random companion is because i didn't want to be inefficient with the corruption maybe it was better it would have been better to lose a companion and maybe um, potentially get a hobbit who could land in Lorien, which could help out Gandalf. So that maybe it was worth it. Um, had I known one or Sauron totally was coming, obviously I would have been happy to get rid of my um, companion a little early. Okay, so I hide and Shadow has Isildur's Bane. And given that the hunt pool has five tiles that reveal me, I might be a little tempted to play that. Let's see what they end up playing. So muster makes sense to get the South Rants and Easterlings to war. And then I want to make sure I get my Rohan armies in the right place to be prepared. And I'm also thinking, I'm also thinking at this point, all right, when should I try and strike at Dolgolder. I'll try and I'm not quite ready to move a bunch of armies around. I want to get this in place, see what comes, slow play it a little bit, see what happens. So now that I see this army from going to Umbar, I'm thinking this could be really great because it's going to give me a free muster at Gondor and then I'm going to potentially take Umbar, depending on how many how many goes and then maybe Dol Golder. So I'm thinking at this point, okay, military victory could be a real possibility, especially because they seem to be allocating quite a few eyes. All right, so I'm going to get an extra unit in Lorien and then they get South Rons and Easterlings to war so we can be prepared for Corsairs of Umbar. I'm happy to see this. And I play Axe and Bow because I'm not ready to go with my strike team yet. And... I want to, the, the fellowship is still perfectly viable. The shadow military is going slow enough that I can just keep chugging along. So, and I didn't want to move again. I don't know. Maybe it was worth it to move again. I'm, I'm still thinking like challenge of the king. Um, I don't know that I certainly, almost certainly wouldn't keep it that long until we get to Mordor, but it is nice to play it to possibly get the red eye. So I was I was thinking about that. It's also still a useful combat effect. Maybe it doesn't make sense to do any of this, but I'm not sure exactly what else I do with that character die other than moving again. And I'm not really in that much of a rush. All right, so Corsairs of Umbar get played. And, you know, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I might consider leaving one unit behind in Umbar if I know that I'm putting Gondor to war. I don't know that, that one unit is going to be necessary. Um, it's a little risky if I have Círdan's ships because the elves are at war, so I can reinforce Dol Amroth. When, when Gondor is like this mustered up right here, I'm a little reluctant to bring this army behind. I think I'd rather sort of push Gondor steadily in one direction and not not leave them free to move this way uh to move east or south all right so um i feel like now is the time to strike gondor is getting close to war umbar is open i'm i have a lot of possibilities for um through a day and a night it's going to be it's going to be really tasty so i move strider i mean aragorn to osgiliath and i move um gandalf out and you know, this looks like it's threatening Moria, but it is definitely also threatening Dol Guldur. 
So he has a, uh, they have a ring. It might be worth it to use it to muster in Dol Golder. And if you're afraid of through a day and a night, if you're just hoping maybe free hasn't drawn through a day and a night, then it might make sense to play this, which is to reinforce Moria quite a lot. I don't think it's crazy, um, but it is tough. I'm, I, I don't know. It's, it's quite tricky to figure out, to figure out what to do there. Um, so we can already see that, that shadow is in quite a lot of trouble for military attacks. We have Umbar that's wide open. We have Moranon that's wide open. We have Dol Guldur that's wide open. And there's just this one army here. So yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty tough for, for shadow. And then, um, they allocate one eye and roll three more and no musters. So this is just, this is just a really bad roll. I mean, I know it includes four attacks, but still, um, to have no musters is, is really rough. And, um, and then I get four attacks. Um, plus we know that this Palantir is, can be used for through a day and a night. So it's kind of like five. And then I also have a ring if I need to for six. So this is a nearly perfect roll for me and like just an extremely bad roll for shadow. And one of the things like I, it would be if, if shadow had rolled zero eyes, then I could move with the, the fellowship pretty easily. And so I think one of the things about having a viable military uh, strategy and getting Gandalf and Aragorn, I did invest dice early in the game to get Aragorn um, and, and a ring, but it's really, this is really an example of how it pays off because shadow, I have real threats, significant threats of winning the game right now um, with a bad roll by shadow. And if they don't have a bad roll, then fine. I can still make steady progress with the fellowship and defend my strongholds with all my extra dice. So as it turns out, this is going to be, because it was such a bad roll for shadow, I should be able to capitalize on this and you'll see how it plays out. So I start with through a day and a night, and I'm a little worried about day without dawn but even with day without dawn i still have four attacks and this army i can muster once to get gondor to war and then three attacks i can go north Thilian, uh minus morgul or i can go west Torondor umbar or if all of those get defended then i can still end up in minus morgul and then next turn take more on a bird because shadow won't be able to hold all three of these strongholds in mordor so um, start off with the guaranteed Dol Golder with Gandalf and, you know, is this army, you know, going to be able to move twice and attack twice to be able to take out Gandalf? Just no way, right? This is, this is a really solid, solid army. And then, um, they... Let's see, I don't, I don't actually remember. I, I guess they... What just happened? They moved a regular from south to north. Why? I don't I don't really know why that just happened. Yeah, I I don't know. Um I mean, I think I, I, I don't know what I would do with Shadow here. It's, you know, pretty tough. I, I think if I had any hope, I would probably just move this army and try and retake Dol Golder. It's, it's really tough for, for Shadow, but, but Free is threatening to win this round. So, all right. So I go ahead and move armies. Um, I know that I'm going to get Gondor to war, but this way 
this this army unit is going to threaten Umbar, and Shadow will have to deal with this. We'll have to spend one of their dice to or to to deal with West uh, with this unit, or is spend a ring to get musters. But so they end up um, spending their ring now to muster. They they think a bit. Are, am I moving armies or what? They end up moving armies. So this unit comes to Umbar, and this these units prepare to take Lorien. And okay, but why isn't this army coming to retake Dol Guldur? Because I have three dice left. I can come in and attack into Mornon if you don't defend it and especially now that you have used your ring I know for sure you don't have any musters I I think probably what I would have done here for shadow it's it's pretty hopeless but I probably would have mustered a regular in Umbar and mustered a regular in Mornon and then I think free ends up attacking once into here once into minus Morgul and I might need to defend minus Morgul and either free can then try and take minus Morgul this turn, or they can continue into Gorgoroth and, and take Morinon or Baradur next turn, but maybe now this army can retake Dol Guldur. Or maybe, I mean, one other possibility for Shadow to consider is maybe you can just get 10 victory points if I'm leaving Gondor completely empty. So maybe that's an idea. I really don't understand why, why one one regular was moved right here. All right, so I go ahead and get Gondor to war now, and then they move a right, they undo the move they just did. So, I, you know, that was obviously pretty silly to just waste two dice, but at this point in the game, there's there's really nothing they could, they could do anyway. Um, you're not going to be able to defend minus Morgul and Morgon. So I just moved to, and also I, without any musters, I also had the possibility of moving these guys in to Moria because these guys don't even have a leader with them. So they'd be stuck. You'd have to move Nazgul to here. Anyway, this is guaranteed. I just moved to North Athelion. We see that I have two more attacks. I'm going to be able to take out Morgon. So that's, uh, that's the game actually so this was a turn five free people military victory i just march into an empty mornon and marched into an empty dual golder shadow ended up wasting a little bit of time that last round but honestly with such a bad roll there was very little they could do um and what's interesting is had they rolled better than and by better i mean a better able to defend against military victory i could have still made progress with the fellowship um all right, so that's the game. Let's look at statistics just so we can see were there any crazy dice results. So pretty standard. There were very, very few, very few uh, attacks that ended up happening anywhere. Um, were there any attacks? I guess I rolled Faramir. I don't think there were any attacks. Oh, Dale. There was one attack in Dale. So, did any units die? This is a game where no units were killed. Holy cow. No, Faramir. <laughs> Faramir killed one orc. <laughs> that was the only, only casualty in the entire game. Because Dol Guldur was taken without conflict. This attack never actually happened. Wow. Wow. And, and I was, I was certainly going to attack that regular in North Athelion with this move, but, but they moved, they moved that regular out of the way. That's amazing. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed the game. If you have suggestions for others, um, please let me know. Thanks so much.